Hey guys, Easy Jeezy here. Uh, I've got an interesting new development here while reassembling this transmission. Um, I already uh, made some videos and the main shaft is a lot simpler than the pinion shaft. I thought I'd blow right through that and uh, get into the transmission jig and I started to get things set up and was looking at it and ran into some issues which is going to require me to uh, disassemble it and make some changes and uh, in the event that this does or does not work I wanted to uh, document what's going on here so uh, essentially uh, we have everything in the jig and uh, I have the the shim, remember I was worried about that shim on the pinion shaft, want it to be just like the transmission. And uh, now that I've got some complications, uh, I'm going to maybe take some measurements on the case itself. You never know when you're getting into these old transmission if someone was in there before uh, or not. And remember I had some problems with, uh, with the main shaft, had this washer, I couldn't get it off the shaft. And... I uh, struggled with that and I did a little filing on the inside. This one looks pretty rough too, but the other one wouldn't come off that shaft without considerable effort. And what's happening here is uh, you can see the offset in the gear. I think it's pretty evident right over there. This uh, this top section here is is way too far to the right and those two gears aren't lining up. There's also a, a shadow line where seemed like it was running that way for a considerable length of time I think it's more evident right here uh, you can see that darker shadow there where the teeth weren't lined up but right now when I tightened up all my tolerances and made some uh, changes I'm even further off I uh, can't seem to get it with one hand but uh, basically I'll just tell you what was happening as the uh, reverse gear Maybe I can get it from this. Let me just set you down for a sec. Alright, you'll be able to probably hear what's going on. Okay, one good click. We had that first second slider working real good. But uh, what's happening here is this first gear is hitting the edge. That's how far off it is. And uh, it's not doing it quite as bad right now. But when I was trying to see how it, it's hitting. I mean... I can't believe it was that far off and you can see uh, real clearly here now this is the shaft of course that goes into your flywheel into the pilot bearing and you know that can go in and out sixteenth of an inch eighth of an inch probably more I don't know exactly but you got some room there and you've got on the back of it here you've got this uh, uh, thrust washer it's concave so that's going to allow for a little bit of movement and that thing looks like it's squashed pretty darn flat. I'm going to measure the thickness of this other thrust washer that goes in there and according to the book, which makes it even more complicated, uh, you've got a difference in the, in the two shafts. This is explaining the difference between early and late IRS shaft uh, whether or not the uh, fourth gear bearing is separate pressed on or it's made as part of the shaft and I did not take that shaft completely apart um, and there you go I tried to cut a corner and I shouldn't have so now I have to pay the price and waste the time should have done it when I had it apart. Check that stuff as I went. But again, we're in a transition year period here. And we've got something old that may have been taken apart before. So, a lot of variables here. This is why you really do need a book. And you need to go with it. Now, here in this one, see it shows the thrust washer. And on this one, it, th it throws. And it shows this spacer being on the close to the gear. And it doesn't have the grooves in it, the oil grooves. This one clearly has the oil grooves in it and is the late model, but it doesn't use the thrust washer out here on the end under the snap ring. So something's not right here. Got to get to the bottom of it before I uh, 
continue on. Alright, this is getting kind of frustrating, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, take the transmission that that came out of and uh, set this housing in there and uh, we'll leave reverse off. We'll put the pinion nut on and everything and uh, see how that goes. But first, first, what do you think I need to do? I need to uh, get a little hungry. Been a while since uh, I ate and uh, had a lot of coffee. Where am I going? Where am I going? Burrito time. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to just walk away, have a burrito, and uh, just let some of that frustration vent away. See you soon. Okay, what we've done, taking it out of the tranny jig, we got it as close as we could, and it seemed a little bit off. Then what I did was dropped it into the transmission, tightened down the uh, pinion nut. You had to heat it up to get it to fall into place. Uh, put the pinion nut on and uh, secured it. And now you can see our hole right here. You have to have your shifting fork all the way forward. You can stick your finger in there and help it along whatever you want to do and the only reason why I'm going through all this trouble is because of uh, all the problems that appeared to be there I don't know if they're gonna be legitimate or not if you need to apply a little bit more leverage <clears throat> you can always reach in from the oil fill plug on this Make side sure that that is making full contact with the face of first gear then Come to this side and do a little tug on that nut. Make sure that it's make sure that it's in there. And this works perfectly good, and you do what you got to do. You can take a uh, open end wrench and drop it in there and tweak it. If you're trying to bust one loose, you know you can always back it up into the center of the hole and loosen it up and then get into your adjustment position so this works fine for that and in reality I can do exactly the same thing here matter of fact well I'm gonna watch it and I'm just you know better get it on Titan trying to look through the camera because this isn't gonna move around okay even though that was an angle, I feel comfortable that that was up against the face. Now I've pulled it back into second gear, and I'm confirming, I have to rotate it to the fill hole on the other side to confirm that it is all the way up against the so gear. Make sure that that slider hub is up against the second gear that way you know you're all the way in now I've left the reverse the guts out of this thing because what I wanted to do is make critically sure that I had that first second slider hub because that is the one that causes the most aggravation for me and uh, trouble is you can't play this game with third and fourth but I feel comfortable if I can have <coughs> get my first gear because of that factory misalignment wish you could wish I could see that's that's the reason for the shifting fork jig because you're shooting blind in here yep so all we can do is move forward hope we got it and uh, nice looking nice looking now what I'm going to do is put the uh, ring gear on and I'm going to slather a bunch of grease on this put the side covers on, torque it down I don't know if you can see through the mess basically we've done a mock up of the transmission uh, put some grease on the ring gear 
taken out the fill hole, the drain hole. I've got my little winder. I'm sticking my thumb in here to put some resistance on, just just to create some drag. I've got it in first gear, and I'm just rotating it. When you look at it like this, it's uh, clockwise, same way the engine's rotating in the car. So I'm just putting a little resistance on with my thumb. So hopefully I can see that wear pattern. And I don't know if you can hear this. I got my hands all greasy. I love that back. One thing I want to talk to you about is don't just feel that backlash in one spot. Rotate it a quarter of a turn. You can feel it with your thumb. See? That feels a little bit more to me. We go another quarter of a turn. It's in spec, but there's still more. If you're building a racing transmission, you want that on the tight side. Find the highest spot and and either just barely make contact, you know. We'll have to have a whole discussion someplace along the line about uh, the good and the bad and the ugly of uh, tight tolerances. Tight tolerances are great for racing, but you're only going, you know, a quarter of a mile or, you know, that, that it's going to be apart and inspected or repaired frequently. But when you have, the more tolerance you have, the more chance you have for slap. And that slap is just like hitting something with a hammer. That's acceptable. Alright. Now I've taken it all apart, tighten down my shift forks, and put reverse in there. And you might ask yourself, well, why don't you just do that the first time? Well, because of this controversy with that gear alignment, I want to look at it once again. I know that I got it in the spot it needs to go in the transmission, and we don't hear it going, doing anything crazy like it was in the shift work jig. First gear, second gear, neutral. There's neutral. There's third. Oh, baby. Nice. Fourth. And we're going to double check that in the jig. Okay, we don't have a reverse, so there's no point in drying that. Alright, and you say, well gosh, it seems like an awful lot of work to do it this way. Yes, it is. Okay, one other thing I wanted to show you. Uh, when you uh, tighten down your side covers, and you've rotated your shaft, you loosen the clutch side cover where your clutch release bracket goes on, your oil fill is, be the driver's side, and uh, back off your, your side cover. And I looked in the book, I couldn't find it, and I looked in uh, the blue books, I couldn't find it. But I have penciled in in uh, one of my books, 7 to 11th clearance. That would be the preload on these bearings on the side. And right in between here. And I've got six. I tried it earlier with a different setup and I couldn't get, uh, I couldn't get three. I barely got three, but I'm up to uh, a lot of combinations. I'm going to uh, call it good with six. You can tell that's the one. I can't read the six, but it's next to the seven. And that's one I used to adjust my valve clearance with. <laughs> it's pretty well shot. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to really highly stress this one. 
it's just one of those uh, good to know dimensions and uh, <laughs> I've had it successfully it depends on what you got in the line of shims it depends on what degree of uh, what what you want from the finished product uh, just read between the lines there um, yeah well guys I'll be honest with you I've had to walk away from this thing about three times uh, this must be one of those transition years uh, not to mention probably a transition year for me I think I got it and I think I'm gonna base that simply on the fact that uh, I put it in the transmission with the proper spacer that came out of it same setup and tighten her down set up first took it out put it in the jig here got reverse uh, adjusted to the first second slider here you got two little lines on here and you got the same two lines on your small reverse gear this side's kind of ground down because of grinding in the gear not being at a complete stop or having your clutch adjusted right and I decided to go with the worn side you can flip the small gear uh, but I decided to just leave it the way it was <clears throat> it's been riding that way and uh, you can see where that brass is uh, kind of taking a, a little bit of a wear pattern Now that's going to sit tighter it's rocking here but when it gets into the transmission it's going to be on the on a good spline shaft this is just a round shaft just to get the distance correct but that'll that'll square up and there's uh, uh, little two, two dots on the end of each gear the same as there is down here so line those up uh, I tried using the shims that I had for setup and it would just bind it up and it worked perfectly in the transmission so that's what I'm going to go off of and uh, I do still have that little bit of an offset a shadow line I don't have uh, a matched width on this thing and that could be from miles of uh, being run that way so uh, I think the only thing left to do is put it in a car and try it I'm going to use probably the uh, fiberglass buggy uh, because that's the easiest one to work on I want to try it with a stock transmission back into stock gearing and uh, see how I like that so anyhow that's kind of the update and uh, I'm just frustrated, tired uh, of fiddling with it so I'm gonna go walk away from it if you get to the point where you're uh, lost your patience level and you have the opportunity you don't this is supposed to be a hobby this is supposed to be for fun and uh, a learning experience and a teaching experience and uh, now I know why there's not very many people throwing up videos <laughs> do this part of the uh, Volkswagen transmission build because there's just uh, I, you just I couldn't cover it all in a video you just have to do it uh, it really comes down to that just getting on that painful learning curve and doing enough of them and the problem with a hobby you don't do that many of them that do what often. you can do what you can we got those gear set stacks set up properly I know that and there's there's just tons of things that you can do but uh, it's it's as complex as uh, building a motor and there's certain quirky little things about these Volkswagen transmissions that uh, you just have to let <clears throat> gives you a taste of it and uh, I'm trying to be honest and we'll put it in the car and see how it turns out that's the best we can hope for right at this point and this is just like I said before this can be a stalker those early transmissions with the swing axle I must tell you that's why I have the, my vast ex the vast yeah uh, that's what I have the most experience on were the swing axle trannies because that's what I used in my uh, <coughs> sand rails all the time and different different animal these later IRS sedan trannies are a different animal so anyhow I'll leave it at that we're not done yet but we're done for now easy jeezy out